Hey, Bikeholics, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley-Davidson and a brand new line for your Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. Affordable chrome lighting and comfort products and CAN bus made simple with plug-and-play lighting systems. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. A new free video I want to announce real quick before we get into our episode might interest you is the Harley Boom Box Wim. The wireless headset interface module failed on me after one year. Is there a recall coming and how to fix it? Uh, I've actually done two videos one week apart um, because I've done a ton of research and testing right here in the Law Abiding Biker Studio trying to figure out for you guys what's going on. And uh, mine was broke. It was like a partial software upload. The videos have all the information. And then I came back this weekend and actually I bought a new WIM to try to fix the problem. It fixed it. And then I did some more testing and found out that there's something corrupt with the new firmware update 1.1.4 for the WIM, but not for everybody because a lot of people are running it and doing fine, but I was able to actually go back and fix both whims by reverting to a previous version of software firmware. But nonetheless, uh, all the details will be uh, in the show notes and of course on the YouTube channel. You can search for those videos or on the website and uh, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash whatever episode number this is on the podcast is how you get those notes. At any time, you can get over to the YouTube channel. It is blowing up. And those two videos blew up. And there's actually in one of them, a funny skit I do of Hardy Executives, which uh, my two co-hosts here, before we fired up here, uh, we'd watched uh, most of it, three quarters of it. Um, and uh, so that's getting a lot of lot of reviews over there. So if, if you have the whim and you're in, at all frustrated or you want to learn more about it, I am guarantee those are the videos that you need to go see. They were time sensitive. Certainly wanted to get them out there for you guys. You know how you can keep bugs out of your whim? Bug spray. Out oh, yeah. Your whim. Oh, yeah. I just went there, bro. Dude, just don't <laughs> even just know the whims, there. Be, the whims behind your fairing. Oh, so you can't spray with a bug spray? No. Unless Shit. you take your fairing off. But it was a nice uh, transition. <laughs> thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> Oscar on cue as usual. <laughs> All right. I love it, dude. It's awesome. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless with a Rick Rack quick attach luggage system quality bag. Head over to lawbiddingbiker.com forward slash store and get hooked up now. Mm. We got a great episode for you guys. Great episode. And some, we're going to start it out. Should we do the outro for the intro? I think that we should I like doing reverse it. back it up a little bit. I do that sometimes just to screw with people. Ooh, they think it's over, but I'm it's just starting. I'm doing the outro, starting. exactly. Oh, yeah. Actually, I just effed up, and I always just go with it. I think that's algebra. <laughs> I do. I just go with it. I've done it before. I just hit the wrong soundboard <laughs> thing. But hey, it's fun. No one would have known. No, they no, don't. I didn't even know. But I, I, I thought I'm, we were finishing. I'm totally transparent. That's, that's it. cool. That's your episode. All up front. We we're will uh, catch you guys on the next one. Yeah, thanks. Right, no, hey, thanks for right. being here. All right, let's do the right music. Let's do this. Yo, there it is, Oscar. Oh, yeah. Tripping people out. That's a cue for my lines. We'll see. Let's see if Oscar can handle it this episode. Mm. I'm not betting on it. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> That's a lot of support. You freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle the majority. The big MM, also known as the 99 percentile. Mm. Nailed it. Oh, yeah. Bam. Large and in charge of the motorcycle yeah. scene more than any time in history. I guarantee it. That's right. By being here, by listening to this very podcast, you are part of what we call the biker revolution. Hashtag Biker Revolution. That is right. Before we get started, we do have just one question for you. What are you waiting for, Bike Alex? Mount up. Let us take you on a wild ass ride. That's right. Three for three. Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast and your high tech redneck. <sighs> Man, he nailed it this time. Complete epic failure. We're doing, we're batch oh, processing. Yeah. So we did one live patron member only broadcast and live chat prior to this uh, and uh, just mutilated. It's mutilated, good I could get the failure out live. It was. Right? I didn't want to save it for if later. If you're going to F up, do it live. We'll do it live. Might just, as well. just go go big or go home, bro. Go, that's what I'm talking about. So, so Oscar cleaned it up there. And uh, also this 
particular. If you're listening in podcast format later, the regular podcast, of course, this will be out as usual, but this is a live video broadcast. It's a video broadcast. It's not live, but all of our patron members will get access to this by tomorrow because I'll upload this uh, video and this podcast up in the back of their patron accounts and uh, they'll get it months before everybody else gets it on the regular podcast. So no better time to get hooked up when we had a blast in the last episode. That was uh, fun. Talking to Brian here, who you'll see or hear in a minute. Um, he gave his story um, on his motorcycle experience, and we kind of went off on some tangents. And he was in a pretty serious motorcycle collision. So make sure that if you haven't, you check out that episode. A lot of good information in there. Thank you, Brian, for being back on the mic for episode two. We appreciate it. You are welcome. <laughs> you got to say, I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, that's the official. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Oscar in the house. Yeehaw. Love having Oscar. We're going to talk uh, main topic today. And we got a couple of voicemails that are going to open it up. Some interesting voicemails you'll probably want to hear. Uh, but we will uh, talk about uh, used oil analysis. It's been a while since we've followed up on that because Oscar is an oil guy and uh, very knowledgeable. If you guys have listened to past episodes, you want to learn all about AMSOIL and or oil or used oil analysis. We've done multiple episodes, so make sure you back catalog for those. And I know that he got, he sent it to me in mid-October of 18 and uh, we've kind of been holding it, um, uh, so to speak, till we could get to it. And so here we are getting to that used oil analysis. And then uh, we are going to uh, get into our main topic, which will be, uh, we've got some questions about ABS brakes on Harleys and motorcycles in general. We're going to talk about BMW. We're going to talk about Harley. And we're going to talk about some emergency braking. And uh, I think those are very important topics because those are the things that can obviously save your bacon out on the road. So there oh, you go. Show. Mm, let's do this. And, uh, you know, we have our sponsors up front. Love our sponsors. These people also make these episodes possible mm -hmm. each and every time our patron members go. Chris Reed of Sulphur, Oklahoma's top tier. Rick uh, Bilou of Clarkston, Washington. Clarkston, Washington, right oh. here in Washington. Washington. Michael Egress of Woodstock, Georgia. Richard Trickle of North Ridgeville, Ohio. Oscar Acevedo of Orlando, Florida. Good name. Mark Lampert mm, of Bativia, Illinois. Brian, pick up the last three. Scott Blackhall of El Centro, California. Stephen Thompson, location unknown. <laughs> Cody Oldfather of Fairbury, Illinois. There you go. LawbitingBiker.com forward slash Patreon is how you get hooked up. That's right. Pledge a certain amount. Purpose content. No risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. Stay within that family budget. We get it. We all got families. There are benefits. T-shirts, stickers. Get in the private Facebook group. The early access to podcasts. The live video broadcast and chat up to top tier. Get access to our premium videos up on request. And uh, still getting a ton of new patrons. We got the patron meetup event that is closed now. Everybody that signed up, signed up. And uh, we've got a huge event. We're going to meet all our patrons that signed up down in Salt Lake City, Utah in June. We're going to go for a day ride. We're going to have a wonderful meetup event and dinner and social event. Oscar's going to be there, of course. We're roomies for the whole trip. We're going to be doing a seven-day trip. That will uh, include one of our days. That will take up one of our days of that seven-day trip. We're going to be through multiple states. Of course, as usual, I will be making a documentary film about the whole thing. Uh, one of my biggest undertakings of the year, always my documentary films. And uh, we will be uh, documenting that entire ride and get that video out to you guys. Um, don't forget to check out all our other documentary films that are already out. And uh, you can just head over to the Law Abiding Biker website, lawbidingbiker.com forward slash ride now, I believe is what it is. Let me look. The yep. documentary films are awesome. Thank you. They really are. Well, after writing and then watching the films, it's like... I don't, know, I don't even know how to explain it. And uh, I have up those production values big time. Last year's was huge. Those take, things take me 150, 160 hours to edit. And I really tell a story in them. I really work hard to tell a story and, and it keeps it really popping. They're very interesting. I get nothing but positive feedback, but lawbindingbreaker.com forward slash ride dash now. And it takes you where all, one of them is still for sale. Uh, those are four purchase videos, but uh, after they're for purchase for an extended period, I eventually do release them on the YouTube channel. So there's a bunch of free ones here, but the newest one was our 12 states in 10 days. Official trailer is on that page, but you certainly can go pick up that video, purchase it. Guarantee, 
grab a beer, some popcorn. You will be absolutely entertained. All right. So with that said, let's uh, crack into a voicemail here. We'll play voicemail one. Mm. Here we go. Hey, Ryan and everybody there at Lab. This is MD from Indiana. Been riding a lot since a kid. Did the whole mini bike with the five horse Breeze and Stratton and all that. And did dirt biking thing and eventually graduated to street biking. My question is on braking practices, uh, particularly on non-ABS bikes. Uh, controlling the threshold before lockup uh, or simulating ABS with controlled pulses. I'd be curious to see what you guys think. I hope that uh, made sense. Thank you for the voicemail, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact. And uh, he left that right on his computer or your phone. Sound like his phone because he was driving, but you're, you're using speak pipe is what it is. But lawabidingbiker.com forward slash contact. And uh, you can uh, hit it right there on uh, mobile or on your uh, desktop, laptop, whatever. You can use your built-in microphone anywhere in the world for free. And uh, we've got, this is interesting because we had two voicemails over kind of similar subjects, which is how I threw this episode together. This one is from Gary Jackson, Valentine, Nebraska. Very involved. Mm -hmm. Hello, Ryan. Hey, uh, big shout out to you guys. Thank you again for everything that you do for us out here. I uh, really appreciate all the help and the videos and everything that we get from you. One um, thing that I'm kind of thinking about is the anti-lock brakes. Um, is there a way that you guys can shoot a video or make a podcast topic about um, checking these brakes, uh, the ins and outs of how they work, uh, what we should feel when we test them, uh, how we should test them, what the safe procedure is to do this. Um, just kind of thinking about that. Would really appreciate it if, if we could get some insight and a little help with checking those to make sure they're working, functioning correctly and to safely do it as well. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate everything you do. Thank you, Gary Jackson, for the voicemail. Again, I could tell that one he left from the computer. So very good. Love those voicemails. And that's exactly two voicemails back to back like that of how we come up and answer questions and make topics for you, the community, because we are community driven. And uh, so we love to talk about stuff that you guys want to hear about. And as you guys know, um, that's another reason not only used oil analysis, but the other reason I brought Oscar in here today is uh, because we're both full-time police uh, law enforcement off. Uh, police uh, motorcycle officers, Leo motorcycle officers, I should say. And so uh, we have some experience and I uh, am also a trainer. So uh, we actually trained together, me and Oscar last, just, last yeah. week, two weeks ago, we qualified, yeah. we did spring quals and uh, also finished the day out with some training. I still and got part the, of that was emergency braking. It yeah. was, and I still got the little scar. Ooh, let's show that to the camera. Hold that up. <laughs> oh, Oscar picked, went down I, hard. Oh, yeah, I went down pretty hard. It was a good one. I was watching it, but here's the deal. Oscar went down like a man because <laughs> he didn't bail. He went all the way down with his bike on the side. He rode it all the way to the ground. And that's something that can be difficult. I've done it. And uh, he just went with it. He was trying to pull it out. It was qualification. And you're just going for broke. And uh, um, yeah, you rode that one all the way. To the that ground, was going to be my best turn ever. I was oh, going to be able to tight figure eight that and be out. And then nope. I knew about halfway through you weren't getting out of that. Damn. About man. halfway through, I you go, he's not me. getting out of that one. Why didn't you tell I mean, me ahead of time that I would have uh, stopped? <laughs> Because I'd rather see you go. Damn you. <laughs> hey, like, hey, bro, you're not going to make arm. it. Just stop right. Yeah, I did. But I rode through it. Well, there's a bunch of firemen standing around, too. There was. Yeah. I asked yeah. Him, I was going to ask him to treat it, you know, because it's bleeding. But oh, yeah. They, I didn't. They did. They would have had, had to stop playing Xbox uh, to help. Oh, you. I did not want to interrupt that. They get <laughs> real angry. <laughs> Here come the firemen jokes. <laughs> we got some great voicemails. So let's first, before we get into that, let's talk about uh, we've got your uh, let's side. I think I've had it up like 10 times and I keep <laughs> deleting it. Um, here's your used oil analysis. Um, so it's called a UOA um, and he does it through, we've given props in the past. We're not affiliated, but Blackstone Labs and uh, Oscar, you've been testing some oil as Oscar's always testing oil and um, seeing how far you can go with AMS oil, of course, which is, we use it. Um, you can get a lot more miles than what the, the, the manufacturers say on your motor, 
There's all, we've done a bunch of these in the past, so I don't want to reiterate everything we've already no, talked uh-huh. about. Go back and do that, but you can actually get it's a checkup on your motorcycle, and they'll you send them an oil sample. And uh, Oscar does this frequently, and they charge a little fee, and they'll send back a health report of how, where your oil is, how your motor is. So Oscar, take it from there. Yeah, I mean, you can read it. It'll be it'll be up on the lab I'll, page. So you'll I'll be, put it yeah in the notes, show notes. You guys will be able to read it. But yeah, Blackstone's nice because they just give you they do you know thousands and thousands and thousands of oil samples, and they group them by motor. So they look at different um, uh, mileage intervals for the same motor with different oils. And then they just track. So some of the metals like iron and aluminum come from different parts of the motor. So if the motor's running good, they can tell you. And I like it because it's data-based. So they're not just going, okay, Harley says that this much iron per mile is good. They're going, okay, we've tested 25,000 twin cam 103s. And this is the average amount of iron we see after this many miles, regardless of the oil type. So, and then they can do some like subcategories of within oil type. But anyway, so you guys can see it and read it. Um, the reason I did this is because uh, for whatever reason, motorcycles, especially we're super anal about servicing. And so I wanted to be able to, everyone to be able to see that I went 7,100 miles. And if you look at the, what Blackstone says about it, I mean, the iron levels, which is iron's one of the biggest indicators of abnormal wear. So if you have a ton of iron, there's a problem inside the motor, like inside the pistons or inside the cylinder. Sorry. Um, so in this one, they said that it wasn't even close. Like the parts per mile, the iron parts per mile is super low with 7,100 miles. So Harley recommends 5,000. Anzoil says you can go double the manufacturer's recommended interval. I mean, I, I still have the same oil in there. Um, and so we, I get a lot of, uh, questions about time. And I think this is a, when did I change it? I changed it on five on May 29th of 2017. So this oil is coming up on two years old and it's fine. So, same oil, same oil. Yeah. So, and you know, there's some guys have the theory about the, the acids in the oil eating at the metal over the winter or whatever. Right, yeah. So we ride during the winter too though. Well, we do. And that helps. But if you look at TBN is the base number. So there's TBN and there's the base number and the acid number. And so the, in this case, there's still lots of, um, whatever, uh, I can't remember. Uh, I think it's sodium, boron, and maybe magnesium. Um, and the, the three, um, ad packs that they use to control acid. Okay. So acid buildup is really what the problem is. So the TBN is still high, meaning there's plenty of ad pack left to control acid. So the acid sitting on the metal over the winter isn't really an issue. Okay. So I, it's kind of a not a argument really it, for people it, it, right. that are worried about it. Exactly. Yes, not to worry. Right. And I get a ton of questions like, oh, well, I've only gone 2,000 miles this year. I don't want to dump good oil, but it's October and I'm putting the bike up. So I went, I did this so you guys could actually see that you, what will happen if you go 7,100 miles. Well, and now it's two years. So I put another 1,500 on this year or close to already. So I'm coming up on the 10,000 mile mark. So, a lot of guys just go, there's no way. It's impossible. No, I would never do it. Well, you have actual proof right. that you can do it. Um, and so one, the only thing in this that you'll see Blackstone touches on is the oxidation. And I read a ton of these with different oils, Mobile One and the Harley oils that with the Twin Cam 103 and I think the 88s, scroll down a little bit. Oops, sorry. Yep. Right there. You'll see the viscosities increased above what it actually should be. Um, and that's the oil oxidizing. And normally oil oxidizing is not good, but for whatever reason in this motor, in this series of twin cam motors, it's not a problem. Oxidation is only a problem if, um, the insolubles. So that's, so when the oil oxidizes, it starts to collect into little, I don't know, what would you call it? There's a name for it. I'm trying to think of it off the top of my head, but, but the, the stuff starts to conglomerate into bigger things that will plug up the oil filter. Okay. If you can see the insolubles, they say less than 0.6 and mine were less or right at 0.1. So that's not, the the oxidation is not proving to be a problem. Wow. So we'll see what happens at 10th. I might even just run through our trip. That'll put me at like almost 12,000. You guys hear that? So I'm going to just 12,000 on one oil change. It's badass. So we'll see. We'll, we'll have actual data that you guys can look at. And if your friends or whatever don't believe you, you can point them to this and say, Hey, look, here's someone that actually did it. Right. But not a common, like very few motorcyclists go, go this far on the oil. And I know they just can't. 
the, it's, you it's just, a mental it's, thing. You I get it. I have that mental, mental thing. thing too. Yes, it is. I'm going to start running it out um, longer like you. It saves you a few bucks. And I hear a lot of guys say, well, you know, oil's cheap. Oh, okay. 110 bucks. It's if, 110 well, bucks. Well, if you do it yourself, if you do it yep. with our law, law abiding biker video, of course, it's free. You don't have to. Free labor. Free labor. Yep. So what I pay you like a hundred for. hundred bucks. hundred bucks. bucks yep. I pay for the AMS oil and the filters and everything. So. And a lot of guys are like, oh, it's the, it's the time. Let's call it what it really is. It's time with your motorcycle. That's true. So I get it. It's hard for me to, to let this go. I was going to oh, change I know. it. I'm it's like, hard for me. Oh, I want to, but I'm going to see how far it'll go. I don't know if I'll. I may keep at 7,500. We'll see what the oxidation looks like at 10 or 12,000. And, and then I'll make a decision. But it, it's kind of nice to ride it and put it away and ride it and put it away. And I just, you know, the other stuff I keep track of, the belt and brakes right. and tires, that stuff is obvious. So I don't know. We'll see. Both those other bikes out there, the ones I don't ride a ton that were kind of just for film projects, the yeah. Dynalo Rider S and the Night Train, those both have oil, AMS oil in them that's over two and a half years old, but they don't get that many miles. And I just let them sit, you know, and leave it five, probably five years. If you're not riding them. a lot or if it's sitting just in general, saying, Oh yeah. In general, yeah. Even yeah if it's you, still doing good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could take a sample at five years. There's guys that have posted samples of oil from 20 years and it's fine in a car that was garaged, you know, that's and, crazy. Dude. So yeah, I don't know that I would run past five years, but I've never done hundred bucks own. every five years. You're good. It's pretty, yeah, yeah that's cheap. That's really cheap. So I did the transmission. I didn't send the transmission to you, but, um, cause I think I still have some break in metals. I don't want anyone to read it and freak out and go, Oh gosh. So I'll do a tranny one. Some break in. So you like the transmission, right? We talked about, I do, you know, oil changes on bikes and guys want to do all three holes. Right. But really the service manual for the tranny is 20,000. It is. It's five every, the service manual is every five for the motor, motor. every 10,000 for the primary, for the primary. And, and 20,000 20 for, for the, the trans, trans yeah. right? So if you're doing sin three and all right. holes, and, yeah. So I'm still on, I'm only on my third transmission change. And so break in metals from the, the, the transmission being brand new, they stay in there for quite a while okay. because there's always a little bit of fluid left in there. Right. So it may take four or five or six changes before that stuff comes out. Okay. And so it, that's what Blackstone said. They're like, yeah, these, these metals are high, but- we don't know how many changes you've done. And if you haven't done very many, then they're probably breaking. So I just left it. But I'll, whenever I'm done with that one, I'll put it up there too. Mm. I haven't done the primary. I don't think I'm going to do the primary. I've just been... You have, what do you mean you haven't done it? You haven't sent it to Blackstone? Yeah, I never sent a primary sample to Blackstone. Right. I've never seen So this is primary. your motor oil specifically. Just motor oil, yeah. yeah. Primary comes out with all the clutch shaving. So how do you measure that? Right. <clears throat> Especially like with the stuff we do with our Harleys even. When no. we're on slipping the clutch a lot. Yeah. There's going to be a ton of clutch material in there. No doubt. So I don't I don't think I'm going to do the primary. But anyway, you guys can uh, check so, it out. And, so you're not even messing with your primary and your trans on this. You're just leaving that oil in. You're just keeping, as long as you're keeping your motor oil, you're going to keep these two because yeah. they can technically go longer anyways. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. They're not as crucial. Yeah. No. So to speak. And Brian, anytime you want to jump in or ask a question or something to for the conversation, feel free. You're not going to offend me. We do have Brian in the house. Um, and like I say, make sure you check the episode he did on uh, on all that stuff, but uh, he'll be chiming in here, hopefully. All right, so that's the used oil analysis. I'll make sure and put a link to that PDF if you actually want to read it for yourself. And now that you have the background from Oscar, exactly what it's about and what he's trying to do, and he can report back to you. There you go, guys. I know that a lot of listeners, I, you know, that's just, it's, it's unorthodox to say, yeah. to, do, to say that. It's even unorthodox for me to listen to it. You know, cause it's always every friend and Oscar gets mad at me cause I, I'm that guy. I'll just be quite honest with you guys. I know how good it is. And, uh, especially once your bike is off warranty, my 14 SGS yeah, is right. off warranty. Now, you know, I don't need to worry about anything so I can run oil as long as I want, as long as it's, it's, you know, doing good UOAs, but I'm that guy because I have a Craftsman lawn tractor. I, and I put, I get AMS oil for the air compressor now. I get AMS oil for my Craftsman lawn or my John Deere lawn tractor and Oscar. And I'm still an idiot, but it's only takes two quarts. I know. And oil for, I do it every year. Just leave and it. It's I stupid. Don't just and he it. told me, just leave that shit for like five years. It's <laughs> yeah, fine. And you're, fine. it's an old John Deere. It's like 14 years old. It's yeah. still running. I put AMS oil, but damn it. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I'm the ortho. Uh, yeah. It's just unorthodox to go. That's what we just grew up. We grew up with my dad every spring. That's what you did. Yeah, right. Change the oil out, change the fuel filter on the lawnmower. And, but that wasn't AMS oil. And that, that's just what you did. And now yep. it's good to go for the season, you know? And yep. so I know I can get way just, more out of that. You can, you know, think of the time you could nap. 
if you, or ride. I, I it's true. you know, Perhaps. I'm not changing my bike oil or my truck oil. So I'm riding or whatever. See, yeah. It is. I get it. And that we are I'm getting still better in the normal. at it. Yeah. I'm getting better. But at still it. some guys change their bike oil. A guy that I work with was changing his every bike five, oil. every three holes. He was changing. It's like every 1500 miles. A lot of guys do that. Yep. But you know, the dealerships do that. The dealerships don't go by the, the, the service manual. So when you take your Harley into the yeah. dealership, they change all three holes every five. Oh yeah, they do. Right. Even though their own owner, owner's manual says right. every 10 for the primary. I know even our police bikes, they do it all yeah. three holes every three times. Yep. I don't. Or every 5,000. Yeah. Just a waste of, of, you know, our it earth really resources, is. I guess. If nothing else, it's kind of a waste of oil. Right. So. Yeah. There you go. You guys got a little bit of proof. And if, if you're all part of the new green plan, aren't you? Oh, faux show. You guys are all you getting and, new cell phones and, pretty you soon. And, you and Acostia Cortez and Bernie Sanders. She's kind of hot, not Bernie. She's, She's not, not if she doesn't, she is if she doesn't talk. Well, yeah. as soon as she talks, everyone's got downfall. Sorry, we're not going to get political here. We're just talking about, <laughs> <but laughs> I just want to duct tape her mouth. No one's just be perfect, quite honest. bro. No one's perfect. I know. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Just duct tape that mouth. <laughs> oh God, that can annoy you real quick. So <laughs> there's your used oil analysis update. What do you think of that, Brian? Pretty good stuff. We've used it for four yeah. years now in all of our stuff. Yeah. 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 Is that because you're next door neighbors with an Amsoil dealer? Yeah. yeah, he <laughs> told me he pushes, I had to. Does he push his product and shit yeah, on you? He told me I basically force everybody's I, doing it. Yeah. This is the shit, dude. Everybody's doing it. Put the shit in your boat too. He you comes out and I do. Nice. He does. He comes it out is. in the morning to get his newspaper Amsoil all over. Yeah. <laughs> No, don't worry Have about that. Have you taken your AMS oil today, motherfucker? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every day. Take your AMS oil, Brian. <laughs> It'll make you run forever. <laughs> oh, God. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's do this real quick. And then we're going to, oh, yeah, we're going to dive right into this, these uh, uh, breaking questions. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bikeaholic, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products? Zero 3D has just what you're looking for. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Harley-Davidson and Honda Goldwing motorcycles. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome and black parts, lighting, and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation, Brian. That equals less time installing, more time riding. That's right. Zero 3D has a design team with over 40 years' experience with a passion for design and innovation. Can bus made simple with a plug-and-play system. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them. Email sales at 03.com. Give them a call, 715-808-0027. Check out your local Harley or Honda dealership. Ask for Sierra or Gold Strike Parts. That's right. A new leader has emerged, so check out Zero 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for Honda Goldwings. Help support us because we've got it all in stock in our storage facility. That's right, our warehouse lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store Big Daddy King Grunt we'll get them out to you ASAP mm, there we go alright so let's dive in uh, I've got some notes here from our voicemails and these are good questions about breaking and we'll try to keep this episode reasonable uh, as far as lengthwise goes but uh, let's not get off track we will oh yeah that's right. guaranteed Brian to get off track <laughs> he learned that in his first episode yes he did I told an old story. Okay. <laughs> so, well, and we told, we also talked about how to properly pull frames on, yeah. <laughs> on the motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you got to get to listen to that episode. It was you great. do have to listen to that. Had a lot of fun. So threshold breaking the first question, yes. and let's just do this kind of in order because it makes sense. Uh, threshold breaking without ABS. Okay. So we're going to talk about some things um, that, that uh, we train on here as police motorcycle officers and stuff that this is one of the most easy things that you can set up. And I set it up for my guys often. And in fact, two weeks ago, I set it up for Oscar and the guys. Um, and these are great questions because you can do a lot of training. Um, I will tell you, uh, you know, you can do the low speed course, high speed course, cornering, all that kind of stuff. It's great stuff. Definitely necessary. But I always tell my guys, this is one of the easiest drills to set up. And if anything's going to save your life, this probably will be the one. When the cager pulls out in front of you um, or an animal runs in front of you or something like that, braking, 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 emergency braking is so important. It's the one, even as police motorcycle officers, we use on the street all the time because people yes. constantly pull out in front of us. Um, and or then slam as soon on as their we, brakes. As soon as we, uh, um, yeah, they slam on their brakes. So as soon as we get the seat out of our butt and we realize that we practiced good emergency threshold braking and that we anticipated the jerk off pulling out, uh, they get a, the lights on and a whoop, whoop. They get and, a special uh, They get the special card. Thing, yeah, piece of yeah, paper. Yeah. Um, but that's only when we're on duty, of course. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> uh, 
but this is very important. Threshold breaking will be, even if you hit, and this is what I tell my guys, um, even if you hit, the more speed that you can dump the most rapidly, as right. rapidly as possible, even if you impact, every mile an hour less that you impact is more that you'll have less likelihood of injury and or death. Um, so that's the key is to dump as much speed as quickly as possible. Even if you think you're going to hit, you just have to dump it, dump it, dump it because your sub survivability goes way up. So when we're talking about threshold breaking, Oscar, do you want to take it from here without ABS or do you want me to roll or do you got something on your mind? No, I, you? I was thinking that I had that Oh six and I remember the first time I didn't threshold break that creepy sliding in the rear end and that is a problem. Uh, that that really cemented for me threshold braking and using the front brake. And with the non ABS bikes, it's totally critical. In fact, yes. When I was at motor school, that ST I was on, the ABS failed in the emergency braking um, practice, and I got that front wheel washout because I was using we were threshold braking, and I was using the ABS kind of using the ABS. I'm going to call it the ABS safety blankie. Mm -hmm. because you know you have abs you can brake a little harder and uh the abs totally fell on that bike and the front end washed out i saved it but uh what do you mean I, by the front end for the audience washing out how would i describe that your back it, end starts walking around on you right no no no, no the, the abs in the front oh, okay so i was riding the front and rear pretty hard and the yes, it was kind of like that death wobble only only i was slowing down and it was a lot more pronounced mm -hmm. and so i went like left, right, left really hard. And then I managed to catch it and straighten out. Nice. And then I was like, what the heck happened? I thought something happened to my front wheel. And the instructor's like, dude, your ABS failed. And I'd laid a patch with the rear tire and I'm like, holy shit. It was creepy. And so, yeah. Wow. Why did it break. fail? Do you know? I never did figure out that it failed two or three times. And I started learning that it was how it was failing or like when, and I, I just shut the key off and turn it back on. And it would, I just, I don't know. Those because you guys destroyed those freaking bikes. That's we, why I failed. Hmm. You guys have heard some past episodes. We, uh, our department tried, yeah, uh, Hondas for one year and got rid, got rid of them. Went back to Harley's, but uh, oh yeah, they got the rid of them to us. And then we sold them. They were sat in our our storage facility at our police department for a long time. And then hey, the county will buy them. Yes, we did, and I'm glad we did. But it is they got their program off now. Yep. They've got Beamers, but uh, yeah. So I think not even talking about ABS, um, some of the basic key things on threshold braking is some people will say, now I'll tell you what I think, but um, some people will say 60, 40. So you always want more on your front than back. And you definitely don't want to lock up the back tire. If right. you lock up the back tire, you just have to get good at that. We'll give you some drills at later in this episode on some easy drills to set up to, to practice emergency braking um, that, that we do. But uh, yeah, you want to, if you lock that back tire up, you got to find where it locks up and each bike's different. Mm -hmm. And the only way to test that is to practice. And it's going to be different because different surfaces have different coefficients of friction. Um, so you kind of got to know what kind of surface you're riding on, but you need to know what that feels like to lock the back tire up a little bit and then just to let up a little bit to get it rolling again if you don't have ABS. Um, and that means you need to be doing more with your front. And without yes. ABS, you do really need to be careful about locking that front wheel up uh, because it can lock up without the ABS. So some say 60, 40, I say, get good and do 70, 30. You yeah, really absolutely. get, get confident with that front brake. Yes. That's the one that's going to stop you. Yes. Right. And I, yeah. And since motor school, I used to ride the rear a lot. Every I don't rider use, does unless you practice. Yep. And I don't, now I use my front brake for everything. Yep. It's secondary, the it back really, one to yep. the front one, because yep. it's so much more controlled. It really is. Slows you so much with less pressure yep. and it doesn't lock up. It takes a lot more, a right. lot more for it to lock up. So yeah, yeah, we do no, that. It. And on our new motorcycle police course, we're, it, it's, it's a little bit faster course. And so there's a lot more opportunity to really work like on the U-turn box with that front oh. where you can really yeah. ram on your front brake and dump that speed and load your front end well, before you go around. Yeah. We, we won't even talk about that freaking rodeo ABS. The rodeo ABS is badass. Let me tell you about that. What's the rodeo? The ro we, the, 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 the slow speed in corner ABS. So, the, oh, and I was thinking about that about our conversation earlier. Let's, well, let's wait until ABS. Okay. All right. Non ABS. Make sure you remember. I will. Non ABS. So, so non ABS. Yep. 70, 30. And, uh, one of the things is, um, they used to do it on the police bikes before ABS is the slide, um, for life. <laughs> and they would, uh, make you, um, come in hot and lock your back brake up. But the, what the bike wants to do is wash out. It wants right. to come around you, that back wheel. And you would literally stand up 
and hit and hit that brake and then stand up and there you can yeah you can slide it it's going to come around a little bit to each side and it's going to fishtail but you can actually keep it straight and yeah. slide it all the way to a stop because the problem is um high side and i've high sided before yeah right is if you cut if you let it come around and then you let up it'll that then you're mm-hmm. gonna you're gonna slam and high side that's right. what a high side is so it's dangerous to lock your back wheel up any way you look at it so they would teach if you lock it up and it starts coming around just keep it locked and stand up slide and it up. slide it for life and slide yep. it to a stop that's a tough mental thing to do and the only way you can do that like any motorcycle training is to do it over and over <laughs> and over until the fear goes out of it and until it becomes instinctual muscle memory but let's be honest about that practice you're not going to do it on your own bike right right well because you, you only made one error you have to get a new bike save that old tire <laughs> yeah <laughs> right, yeah well no i'm but i mean the only reason anyone right. did that is because someone else is paying for that motorcycle. I'm not. That's true. And the police uh, needed to know how to do it. Well, and they down, do, right? Because of the miles you're riding. But as far as like Brian and I out on the street, that it's kind of. Non ABS you, are tough to practice because you're going to burn some tires. Yeah. Well, you, you could practice in the grass. Oh, yeah, right. But I'm talking about if you high side on accident, even if you Correct. high side at, 12, at 20, you're going to hit hard. The bike's going to, you're going to break parts in the bike. So. And your you, body. And yeah. your body. So you may be able to practice that on grass. Yeah. You know, maybe, but practically that's tough to practice. I, it is without ABS. Without non, non ABS. ABS. Yes. So, it, yeah. The actual slide for life. Yes. yes but you right. could still practice the, the 70, 30 threshold yes. braking yep. in a certain amount of distance and yes, just absolutely. really get good with that front and figure out right where you're, you know, if you, and if you let up on your back brake quick enough, it won't come around as soon no. you, you just got to get good at feeling as soon as you feel it start locking, just let up before right. it starts coming around on you that's the key right because once it starts coming around you yeah that's where you get in the high you're, side you're in trouble right and you can do this at a lot lower speeds if you want to feel what it feels like to lock your back tire up just go in a parking lot and start at 10 you know yep. it doesn't have to be anything fa- fantastic and you know at 50 60 miles an hour no fiery crashes <laughs> no fiery crashes. <laughs> just go out in a parking lot and and test where your coefficient of friction is and lock that wheel up and feel what it feels like to let up a little bit. Just don't let all the way off the brake, but just let up a little bit. So you start rolling. You can do it at really low speeds and practice this stuff. So, um, and again, get down and get uh, comfortable with that 70 front brake, 30% rear. There's a reason there's two um, rotors on the front. You, right. Yes. And exactly. only one on the rear. On some bikes. Mm, I think. No, well, different brands and stuff only seriously. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Even, even some Harleys, um, trying to think there's gotta be some heart, but there are other bikes that don't have, um, God, I was reviewing one recently. I can't think of it, but, uh, it didn't have, it was a different brand and I can't think of it off the top of my head. Hmm. It was an electric bike. I can't even think of well, it. Well, those but, only go like 15 miles an hour anyway. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> Not the live wire does 110, baby. Oh yeah. 110 centimeters per hour or something instant like. torque dude oh i forgot everything it. right we there. already talked about that damn thing don't, the throttle. Don't, look, don't remind me <laughs> but <laughs> so that's what i would say get yourself a parking lot without the abs and hopefully we gave you some uh good tips the other question that uh he asked and i wanted to touch on is should we practice controlled pulses to mimic abs and i will tell you and then you can jump in oscar if you don't agree with me it's fine um I wouldn't get in that habit because you can't mimic ABS. Um, ABS happens so fast and you think pumping your brakes, that's not really ABS. ABS is locking your brake within milliseconds and unlocking it and locking it. I mean, milliseconds and the human just can't reproduce that. Um, I don't think that would be to me, um, even when we'd had non ABS spikes, we didn't really practice. Um, I don't know. I just don't think mimicking, trying to a human mimic ABS would be uh, efficient. I think you'd be better focusing on 70, 30, um, 70 front, 30 rear percent threshold braking and feeling what it like to lock that rear tire up and then letting up a little bit. Right. I don't think you can mimic ABS. Maybe that's what he was talking about is, is, I think he, he was kind of pulsing. The, he was saying controlled pulses, but I wouldn't do that because yeah, every time you do that, you're giving up brake. Yeah. You're, once you're, you lock into 70, 30, if you let up, it, you're actually going to, it's going to take you a longer stopping distance. Yeah. Only ABS can do that. It's a computer that's doing it within milliseconds. It's yeah. Our reaction decisions. time's too slow. Yeah. Humans are too to, slow. You're giving up your brake yeah. by trying to do a controlled pulse. Um, just learn how to brake as much as possible without locking up your brakes. Save the controlled that's, pulse for your second there, date. Exactly. <laughs> there is, I mean, 
Yeah, you're freaking speechless. Did you see that right there? Look at that. Dude, speechless, I see it. I see bro. It. I, I, hey, you need to give me like 10 bucks or something. I just made you speechless. Controlled pulsing <sighs> has its place, <laughs> but you got to control the pulse, Brian. You got to control the pulse. I'm just, oh, that's awesome. I'm just saying. Where, I don't know where he comes up with some of these too. They're totally <laughs> off the wall, but very applicable. It was instantaneous. It, it was, was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but fun around here brian that's what i'm talking about <laughs> all right do you have anything on that brian you, any questions or anything no i think though um it's interesting to me i'm listening more than i'm talking because i think a lot of this is uh really good information that i could have used yep and uh, brian talked about his accent yeah. and a lot yeah so that's good that's good if you do have any questions please because if you have the question maybe the audience does so feel free um good so let so anything else on non abs bikes oscar that you think would be relevant no sir just like that just like that mm. all right dude let's do this and then we're gonna we're gonna do this and then we're gonna talk about we're gonna d- dive into abs and some of the drills that you can do if you're searching for the easiest and quickest detachable luggage system for your motorcycle rick rack has just what you're looking for forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach Trapex luggage rack systems. This father son team has designed something really special. Can't find it anywhere else. Yep, these guys ride so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack quick attach system is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use Rick Rack, you'll never go back. What are you waiting for, bikeholics? Head over to lawbidingbiker.com for slash store. Check out our full line of Rick rack systems and bags oscar is rocking a rick rack system he got for helping with the video it's great and a bag yeah a rick rack luggage bag and he's going to be sporting it along with me on our seven day uh Can't north wait. rim grand canyon patron meetup Man. trip coming up in june yep i'm excited that was all over the the form the chat on the last episode was it guys are i was excited. only able to, yeah they are i'm getting excited i, I just am too ride, yeah dude. i do too the what weather's do getting nice um late june july 3rd or I'm <laughs> you're right it's late june late i can't remember the exact date yeah um, june's like the 16th yeah i think That's the our, 16th or something like that yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I should so, plan on dog duty that week. Oh yeah. By the way, right. Hey, you're going to be home in June. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, make sure you leave the bedroom window open for Brian a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so he can sneak in. <laughs> Just saying. <dude. laughs> neighbors. That's how neighbors that, roll. That, you know, it should happen sometimes. It happens. Okay. <laughs> so let's do, let's do this. Let's talk about uh, our second question um, to reiterate was how to check ABS, um, kind of what you should feel. I think we're going to specifically talk about Hardy Davidson and we may or may not talk about BMW. <laughs> we can talk about my screw up if you want. <laughs> um, but Oscar, he's always highly prepared for the episodes. Um, even though I sent him the show notes, I, he could have went out for five minutes and felt, but that's right. So... Um, <laughs> Oh, I sent you the show notes. He's at dinner. Oh, I should open those up. That would be a good idea. I always wait till the last minute. That's great. That's great. Uh, but uh, what do it should feel like? And then uh, how to test them and safe procedures, basically, maybe on how to test them. And I will reveal uh, a, a great uh, 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 practice scenario that you guys can go out. And it's actually one of the easiest, as I've already mentioned, on how to set up. Um, you don't need a lot of cones or anything. You don't even need cones, technically. Um, you just need some markers. So, all right, uh, Oscar ABS, I'll start, and then you can jump into it a little bit if okay. that works. Yep. Do all it. right. Um, first of all, uh, we'll talk specifically about Harley and uh, checking those ABS. So the way I do it, I do it on my personal bike, and I do it on my police bike too. The reason some may, may be asking, well, why would you test your ABS if the dummy light goes on when you start it, and then it goes off when you start rolling? They should be working, Oscar. Oscar's pointing at himself. Okay, I'm just going to straight up tell you because Oscar, of all people, is just the one that said he had a Honda and it, the light was probably right, but yet they failed him. Um, That's true. I, it is true. I want to know um, at least weekly, and I really do, that my systems are working correctly and I test front brake, 
back brake, you know, all the regular uh, procedural stuff that you want to check on your bikes um, to make sure stuff's working, brake lights, things like that. You don't want to get rear-ended, but ABS is important. So the easiest way to do that is I, it's, it's this easy. Um, find a parking lot. That's fine. I live in the country. So when I pull out of my driveway, I'm in a road where there's usually not any traffic at all. And uh, I'll just get up to about 20 miles an hour. Very simple. And I'll literally romp on my rear brake. And um, I don't necessarily test the front ABS a whole bunch because if the system's usually working, it's working. Um, but the easy, it's hard to get the front to get into ABS um, and it looks a lot more violent. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but I will test those now and then when we're in a parking lot uh, doing brake box exercises, but just weekly I'll test my rear. That's what I do. 20 miles an hour. Um, I wouldn't do it on gravel or anything like that. Cause even with ABS, on gravel, it will still start sliding out to the side a little bit on you and it can be pretty sketchy. So make sure you have a good solid. Yeah, it's going to just burn your tire just a little bit, but at 20, it's not that big a deal. And uh, I'll, I'll hit them and make sure that I'm feeling. So on a Harley, it's, 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 pretty, it, it, it's pretty violent the way the ABS system works. So what you should feel on a Harley, first of all, you're going to note audible sounds. That's the thing you're going to notice the most. It takes trying it a few times to really feel what it feels like. But just romp on that rear brake. You're going to stay straight because it's, that's what ABS does. It keeps you straight. That's the beautiful part, which is why I want to know my ABS is working because I want to make sure if I'm emergency braking that I'm going to stay straight and I'm not going to have to do the slide for life and all that kind of stuff. Um, ABS is an amazing, amazing thing on a motorcycle. Um, we'll talk about re, uh, uh, integrated braking too. Um, reflex. Oh, let me write that down. We'll talk about reflex a little bit too. But um, the thing on a Harley is you should hear it's clunky and when it comes in and out of ABS, so it'll just make a big clunking sound and it may be a a second or so and it'll do another clunking sound and that's just the ABS coming in and out, I believe. Um, And it sounds horrible. Um, It's just a clink clank kind of sound. But in between those, once you you start feeling it, you'll actually feel the brake pedal and you'll feel just like in a car. It's a lot more subdued. It's not like in a car, everybody knows when you hit it, like on snow and stuff, it's yeah. just, you know what I'm talking about? It's that, oh, yeah. it's that yeah. pull. And that's why that can't be recreated, but you'll feel it in your Harley brake pedal um, in between those clunk sounds of it coming in and out. And sometimes it's hard because once you hit it, you might not push hard enough and you'll come out of ABS. Just try to push that rear brake. I mean, slam it as much pressure as you can. So you stay in ABS and you'll feel that actual brake pedal start to pulsing. That um, clunk is pronounced. It's you pronounced. You cannot miss it. You, and it you, is a unique sound. It is. Like really there's nothing is. else that sounds like it. So you, if you're like riding down the road and something happens, you go, I wonder what that noise was. And you were braking hard enough. That's ABS on a Harley. Yep. Clunk. It just oh, kicks in. And we hear it all the time when, when we're doing the brake, uh, brake box drills and people who aren't used to being around Harleys will ask what that is. Like at motors course and stuff. Yeah, like that. Right. It's just the ABS kicking in and out. So, um, that's how I'd say that, that way, you know, your ABS is working. It's that simple. Again, be safe about it. Don't do it on a busy street where you're going to get deep trunked or rear ended. Um, do it in a private parking lot or like me, uh, if you're uh, in a county road where it's safe and there's no traffic around, uh, do it that way. All right. The other thing about, uh, I just want to talk quickly about a lot of the Harleys 14 and on have the reflex braking. We've talked about it in the past, but I'll just reiterate a little bit on it. Uh, on the reflex braking, basically what that means is, um, so when you go to hit your rear brake, when I'm telling you to test your ABS, you're going to hit your rear brake um, as hard as you can. It's also because you're not grabbing any front, you're still going to front brake. And that's why you're stopping so quick um, because your back brake is telling, uh, it's a reflex system. So if you grab all front and you or you grab all rear, it's going to automatically start front braking for you because it realizes uh, you're going this speed, it's got wheel sensors and it's going to say, you're an idiot you're cranking your back brake too much and it's going to automatically front brake for you. And if you grab all front, it's going to go, you're an idiot and you're going to endo. Uh, it's going to immediately start applying the appropriate amount of rear braking. And so that's the reflex system. Everybody calls it something different, integrated brake systems, but you've got both on 14 and on touring models. It is an amazing, amazing system. However, I wouldn't tell you to rely on that. That's dumb to rely on that. I still practice appropriate 70, 30 every time. Yes. Um, because... When it fails, you don't want to be relying on those systems. You don't um, want to be at, what, 40 in the parking lot of the Sun Dome and have the ABS fail, lay down right. a 40-foot 
badge. We're going to talk about that <laughs> on Oscar's BMW but, you know, failed. But when you guys test your ABS on the Harleys. The Harleys gonna... ABS don't fail like the BMWs, <laughs> which is interesting, but. <laughs> well, it's because the Harleys are going so slow all the time. Oh, so when you guys, go, when yeah, you guys test your, <laughs> <laughs> when you test your Harley rear ABS system, what you'll find out is the rear brakes suck. And so you have to you threshold have to. brake. You have to. It, it, it does not apply. That's why they went to the reflex link is because the rear brake is just so inadequate on every mm -hmm. motorcycle. It's usually a single caliper and the weight's usually kind of more distributed. And then a car, you have the um, motor up front. So you have some weight. Right. So when the cars brake, it pushes down and that weight's already up there. But on the bike, you're the weight's over the center. Yeah, and right. so the rear is terrible. So you you have to do threshold braking, even with reflex link. It just doesn't apply enough to the front. It'll apply some, and it'll help you stop faster. But it's not enough if you really need it. So correct. Don't yeah. Don't don't rely on it at all. The system is not perfect. No. So we tested it um, a little bit out on the brake box, <laughs> and uh, another uh, guy on my unit. Um, we were just curious, so he just went in. And the thing is, you'll be surprised that once you get good at this and comfortable with it, and you get rid of the fear, it is amazing how hard you can pull your front brake. Yeah, right. It is amazing how hard you can pull that thing and how quick you can dump speed by doing so. But he tested it uh, both seventy thirty, doing it appropriately, and he stopped within the distance. And then we tried. I said, just come in and grab all front. Don't do any back. Sketchy. And he grabbed all front, and uh, it the reflex system does work but he wasn't able to stop quite in the distance. So mm. it's not as good, right? but it's still for the, for the average rider out there who doesn't practice and doesn't, you know, that kind of stuff, yeah. it can help them a lot. It, oh, it's still right. better than nothing, right? Yeah, it's still right. better than the alternative of all back break, right. you know? So it's there for a reason, but it definitely, the human is still better. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the 70, 30, uh, we can still stop it faster than just allowing the, the, cause it takes a little bit of time for that system to figure it out. It does. And, uh, it's still a human feeling. It is still better than wheel sensors. Uh, the BMW with 70, 30, I might even 80, 20. I use my front brake a ton Yeah, and it breaks hard and I can grab a ton. So remind of, us what BMW again model just for the an, audience that um, haven't listened in the past. The 1200 RT, it's RTP. It's the 1200 RT with, it's wired for police equipment. Is right. what makes the RTP portion of the it. But police, the, the, the po -po. police, the po -po but the motor and all that other stuff. It doesn't have a rear seat. It's got a trunk, but um, it's the same as the RT, the civilian 1200 RT, as far as the motor and training stuff go. That's what Oscar's stuff. riding every day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about emergency, your emergency braking experiences with that. Other than uh. the fact that Oscar, <laughs> can't totally. really, I was asking him at dinner and he's looking at me like he can't really explain how it feels. Um, the ABS, but he's, we're going to come back on another episode <laughs> and he's been in them before. It's just, I think it's, I, I, think I do it's subtle. all jokes aside. I think it's so subtle that yeah. it's not as there's no audible and it may not feel the same as a Harley. So go, go, I, with, go with the BMW and your experiences with emergency braking and stuff like that. We, a lot of cars, you know, I, I hit the lights and cars just stop. Like they jam on the brakes. Right. And so you have that 1.5 second lag time and perception. Yeah. And I am on that bike and it stops hard. Like I've had cars, I'll be catching up to a car at 80 and then I start slowing down before I hit the lights and they see you anyway and they know you're coming and they just hit the brakes. And I've, I've gone from 80 to 20, like, yeah, and I start to come off the seat because no matter how hard I push, I am braking from braking hard. Right. And it stops fast. So I, I can't, I imagine I had to have been in the ABS. I just didn't know it. Maybe yeah. because I'm watching the car and, and I'm working on stopping or whatever. I don't know, but it's, um, or it's just real subtle. It's, I, I've been in my Harley's ABS all the time and it's so obvious. Right. So maybe it is. I'll, I will. I'll go out with the rear, just test the rear. But you know that day at the brake I think box, it's happening. It's just, you're, it's so subtle. You're not aware it's it actually could be. happening. Yeah, it could be. And I, it's harder to feel the 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 pulsating in a motorcycle because you got the whole engine and vibration and right. it's just, yeah, especially in the Harley's, it's, it, you, I have to really feel for it to feel it. Yeah, um, I don't know if I've ever felt the the true vibration, the ABS vibration and the brake pedal on my Harley, but that clunking and it skips a little bit, you know, so you, you're slowing down and then you, a little bit, you shoot right. forward and then that's obvious. And that's why you come off the brake pedal a little bit yeah. sometimes, which is why you don't feel that. You really got to keep down on it. That's what I've I, learned. You got to keep down on it to feel the pedal actually pulsate. I just use, man, ever since motor school, I really use my front brake a ton. Yep. I mean, I maybe I probably 80, 20, I really don't use my rear brake on either bike. The only time I use my rear brake one, if we're tight turning or whatever. Well, we're doing slow uh, course work. You have to use your back to keep you up. And yeah. and then just like right before I come to a stop sign or a stoplight, I'll just, 
I'll use the rear brake. Right. Same but, here. But stops and, and, you know, pre-corner slowing and stuff. I use my front brake a ton. Yep. Because it's so effective. It is. It feels so much more controlled. It really I love does. it too. Yeah. It's hard for me to, yeah, to, to, I don't rely on the rear for much. Mm, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Except for, oh, the, so the rodeo. <laughs> so the new Harleys do this. What year is yours? 18? Uh, my Harley? Yeah. No, it's a 14 SGS. Oh, that's, no, 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 no. I'm talking about Oh, oh my police bike? Yeah, yeah, it's an 18. Do you, you don't have the, AB, you have the ABS in corners. We talked about it. Slow speed when you're, you're doing a bar lock turn and mm -hmm. you're at the right speed. Oh, yeah. BMW designed the um, lean sensors. Yep. Uh, past a certain lean angle, if you touch the rear brakes. Same with Harley. They will skip. The ABS will actually engage. Yep. So I know what that feels Fetch like. you up in a course. It is I have brutal. to go slower in our course because of that. Like right. the figure eight. Yep. I've had to retrain myself to not go as fast because if I go too fast, I have to lean more. Yep. And it doesn't like that speed and that lean angle. Right. And it'll it'll miss. It'll because it wants to stand you back up. Yep. Right. So it's telling you, you're going down. I'm not going down. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And the bike's like, no, you're going down and I'm gonna stand your shit up. Yeah. And right. You stand up and you go right through the cone wall. Yeah. Cause you're supposed to keep going around. It's it's a shitty feeling. I really yes. had to retrain my I hate it. And Honestly, I hate it. The BMW in, in that, what was that? Figure eight um, U-turn box. I hit, I was going in le on the left side, coming out right. And that freaking cone, I would run over every time because I was trying to lean and just let go of the gas or the brake. And, but I would just be on the brake enough at that speed that it would shoot me through the cone. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> it doesn't make any noise. That ABS doesn't clunk no. or nothing. It just is, it, the bike skips and it goes faster. You're like, whoa. What yep. Uh, it's trying to stand you up. Yeah, right. It's exactly what it, and it does. It works well. And then Shoot you, you, then straight you blow out the cone, <laughs> cones yeah. and shit. <laughs> yeah. But again, what we're doing with those bikes is not the normal thing. Right. That normal riders, we're pushing these things and they just weren't set up to understand that we're on a training course and not actually in real life. No, they or do. Out on the, BMW did. But, and then there's a process to shut it off, but well, it's we a can, stupid process. Yeah, we can shut ours off. It's called unplug the a whole ABS reflex system. There's one master plug, but I don't oh, like doing that. Yeah, so you because, forget. Well, it, it not only forget, but then then I don't know what it feels like on the road. Oh, right. right. I'm pushing it. I want to know what I can actually do on the street. And if True. I can't, if that bike's not capable, if I can override that bike, I need to know that because I won't override that yeah. bike. You know what I mean? BMW allows you to pull the, um, the they, have, they call it the rodeo fuse. So you can pull the fuse with the bike off turn the bike on, start it, put the fuse back. And then as long as you don't shut the bike off, you'll have that, only that disengaged, the, that lean angle. Well, that's ABS. cool. I wish I could just disconnect that. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. It's under the seat somewhere by the battery. And then once you turn the bike off and turn it back on, then you got to do it again. And so we haven't messed with it. We've just- The police models, they should have just put a switch for you. Yes. That'd be nice. Have. And then every time you turn the bike off, it resets. Right. You yeah. know, so that you don't forget. Right. It, it resets once you shut the motor off. That would be- um, I would tell, I would call Germany right now and uh, talk to the Germans about that. <laughs> yeah. and say, they, hey, they're good listeners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're good <laughs> listeners. <yeah. laughs> no shit. Dude. We did. We talked to one of the dealers, the uh, owner of uh, Western Oregon. And he, he was the one that told us about it. And he, we, oh no, it was not the owner. It was the, um, the Oregon BMW rep. And he was the one that kind of explained it to us and, he kind of talked about the switch and stuff and why BMW went with the fuse and whatever. I mean, they know they did it on purpose, right? Whatever. Pain and in the ass. talking about, uh, to wrap this up a little bit. Um, the reason to, uh, you know, practice that 70, 30 is we were out on the police motorcycle course <laughs> two weeks ago <laughs> and Oscar comes in. I'm going to tell you guys this drill and that's how we're going to wrap up the episode. But, um, he comes in hot like he's supposed to mm -hmm. probably hotter than he's supposed to. We try that, um, to, to go over what, the recommended course speed is. And uh, uh, he totally just, just out of the blue, up just patch. fucking comes in locked it up. with that rear tire. You did kind of do a slide for life, but you didn't stand up, but you locked it up for quite a ways. Dude. And, and it's it just stayed, white smoke. It stayed straight. It stayed straight. That's why perfect. I think, that's why I think somehow your front wasn't locked. And I don't know, dude. Because then the ABS light came on in right? that, it the, did, in that huh? slide. Yeah. And you still don't know why. We've I've had the ABS fail on that BMW before, and we told the dealers, and the guy reset it. There was a recall or something on it. He was supposed to fix it, but that's so that's See, why all I, bikes have recalls. Mm, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but I, I literally call it that I failed because I it's the ABS safety blanket. Right. I mean, we did that at fifty, almost sixty right pairs. Wes and I, and 
<laughs> well, yeah, we do emergency <laughs> braking pairs. Yeah, that's pretty fast for it is that brake box. It is real fast, but because you box. have the ABS safety blanket, and they're lighter bikes, they stop quicker. <laughs> they do than yeah. the Harleys. That's for sure. Yeah, like two hundred um, pounds lighter, they stop quicker. Yep, they do. Yeah. All right, good stuff. Good stuff. So there you go. If there's no other reason. Uh, to practice that in case your <laughs> systems fail. Don't, don't look like an idiot like me. <laughs> right. Just, it was cool looking though. It and it makes for a great story. So I was cool. laughing. I was like, what the fuck just <laughs> yeah. happened? I go, dude, clearly your ABS are not working. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should have tested them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tested them. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So let's, uh, as we take it out here, uh, let's talk about the easiest um, uh, thing to set up, guys. So here's what you do. Um, this is called the 40 mile an hour I don't have it in front of me, but it's called the 40 mile an hour brake box drill. So find yourself a parking lot, get permission, whatever it is. You're going to need quite a stretch because you got to get up speed. Um, and you can set up cones or you can use, uh, I mean, really whatever you want. It's not really about the cones, the cones. You could use a sweatshirt, a couple sweatshirts. I mean, whatever you want. But what you'll do is give yourself a nice distance to get up to speed. You'll need to get up uh, at, at the height of this drill. You'll be at at least 40 miles an hour, but you start down at 20. So give yourself a great runway and then have some markers, a gate that you're going to enter and, uh, and then, and then measure out 62 feet. All right. From the entry gate to a wall. Um, or again, you could use sweatshirts or not shoes. a real wall, please. Not a real wall. Make sure it's something that you can actually bust through and it's not going to kill you. <laughs> Do not use a real wall. Thank you. Actually. That's because you know, I, I mean, like you have to put that in there. I, it's correct. It's okay. Yeah. 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 No <laughs> doubt. Um, yeah, something that you can just go through if if you because you will fail, um, oh, yeah. especially when you're learning it. You will fail and you'll be going out the back wall, so to speak. So that's 62 feet. Um, so uh, that we do this with the Hardys, we do it with the BMWs. BMWs, obviously, we could narrow that space down a little bit. They can clearly do it quicker than that. We can do the Hardys at like 45, but after that, the the systems can only do so much. So. Um, what you do is you come in and uh, we have laser guns, of course, to make sure people aren't cheating and we'll start our guys at 20 and after they're comfortable with 20, we'll get up to 30 and then, uh, get up to at least 40. Here's the key to the drill. Um, couple things. You got 62 feet to stop before that back wall. And so you can't want you, you, you can't be covering the rear brake because this isn't, this is supposed to simulate, oh fuck, you know, somebody just pulled out and you weren't anticipating it or right. there's a deer that runs out. You've got 62 feet to emergency threshold brake. So no covering the, the front brake, no covering the rear brake, feet are flat on the floorboards, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be up second, third, uh, third gear probably uh, for 40. And uh, so here's the deal. You hit that front gate. That's the time you can actually reach for. And you, we have people watch this because we test each other and we call people shit if you break <laughs> early and stuff, of course. You got to buy beer. But you once you hit that front, that first gate, that's when you it's everything. You grab that 70, 30, 80, 20, whatever you want to do, depending on what kind of bike you're riding. And you're doing the emergency threshold braking. At the same time, you should be looking in your mirrors. And we look for guys to do that. We'll hold fingers up to see how many fingers we had. The reason is this is simulating that you just got on the binders and now your second danger is being rear-ended. So you're looking both head checks in your mirrors because if somebody's coming up behind you, you're going to have to make another evasive mover maneuver, not only braking, but you're going to have to um, you know, uh, pivot right or pivot left. So you're looking in your mirror and while you're doing all that, let me tell you, this is fun training rookies doing this over at the police yeah. motorcycle school. It's a lot. It's, it's scary um, when you first do it, especially when you're up at 40. And at the same time that you're looking in your mirrors and your threshold breaking, you're downshifting to mm -hmm. first. You have to get back down to first as quick as possible. And as soon as you come to a stop, it's only one foot down and that would be your left foot. You've shifted down to first. You've looked in your mirrors. And then as soon as you get to a stop, bam, you either break right or break left. And that's simulating that somebody's coming up behind you quick and whatever's in front of you, you stop for and you break out to the right. So that's a lot to think about. It's 40 miles an hour. When you see that gate coming, you're like, oh, especially tell you, but it's funny the the human brain normalizes it. And as soon as you get comfortable with it, you'll be like, oh, that's not that big a deal. But at first, I'm not going to lie to you. Even when you're rusty at it, that gate comes up quick and you're like, there's no way I can stop. There's no way. Cause you see how big the, the, you, the you, box is. You're like, this yeah. is not going to happen. It happens. And uh, it may take a few times and yes, guys blow walls. And, um, but then you'll, the more you do it, you'll realize you'll start grabbing your front more and more and more. And you'll realize that it's safe to do so. And that it's not going to dump you over the, the front and stuff like that. So, um, again, 
Key, yeah, go ahead. Well, when you so when you guys are doing this on your expensive Harleys, like if I was going to do this on my, I do it on bike, my purse. I don't care. I would, and I would too. It doesn't hurt anything. It's just breaks. no, 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 no. Yeah, right. right, okay. But the only danger is if you, if you're going to do the one foot thing, or if you when you really get good at it, sometimes you're a little unbalanced. Take your saddlebags off and put a little you know garden hose on. Just your, in case you drop and, it. Yeah, you're gonna you're probably gonna drop it because sometimes when people stop that quick. Yes. And they put one foot down. It's you're such, off balance. You can be off balance a little yep. bit. And you might just, as you stop, yep. when you're all the way stopped, dump it to the side, yep. which won't hurt your bike. Yeah. No, it's not going to hurt anything. But if you don't Bags, have the right yes. saddlebag guards and then it'll scratch your saddlebag, just take that shit off and just put some, you know, um, hose or something on your engine guards. And then if you, then, then you don't have any worry about tipping it over. It'll yep. be no big deal. So. And yes, that's a good point. And the reason for one foot down guys is everything's time. And if you get, good at putting that's why you always see motors officers we only put one foot down the reason is you're still on your brake and it's one less foot to get up and out of the way when you need to make that evasive maneuver so right. everything's time and you don't want to have two feet down on the ground and have to pick both feet back up and you're still on your brake which gives you some control for a really hard 90 turnout i think um, that's really what it amounts to it's both yeah is, is you're you're still on that rear brake and so if you do have the evasive tight you can just give it a shitload you of can gas bar and, lock start, and go yep and you can bar lock and go because you're on the rear brake a little bit and do a little tail dragging yep, yep yeah no yeah i get it but if you don't go the one foot thing two foot that's start fine. two foot and then go one foot yeah yeah just it. work your way up do whatever you're comfortable with whatever your skill level is but you can do this in any church parking lot yep. um you can use the lines and just measure it out make sure you have it measured out good give yourself 72 feet give sure. yourself 82 feet right and then bring your box and if you're not comfortable with that we don't want to push anybody over their limits but again just remember it, top speed is going to be 40 depending on the bike i'm um, hardy for sure and then um, make sure you look in your mirrors, no early break and no covering, shift down as quick as possible, come to a stop, one foot down, look in your mirror, bam, turn out left or right. Mm -hmm. And that's the drill. And uh, that is the one that I have trying to uh, introduce or have in every training that we do together as agencies, yeah, um, because right. I'm telling you, if you don't think so, and y'all know it listening, I guarantee it, that's the one thing. Um, that's probably going to save your life over any other type of, all the other training is good too, and it can save your life, but that's the one, if you don't do any other training, at least do that. Cause it's so simple to set up and it's so easy to practice. It's not going to hurt your brakes. That's what brakes are for. No, you, you can do it fine. over yeah. and over and over and our brakes get hot and stinky. If they're getting warm, go out and ride for three minutes at a, yeah. at a low gear. We just run the air through them, be cool fine. them down a little bit. You'll be just fine. And, uh, it's not going to really going to hurt your tires too much either. So yeah. Mm. That's cool. That is awesome training. It is. And it's fun. And you can build a lot of confidence. You really can. It, it, it'll make you a better rider because once you know where that point is, then yep. you can ride more aggressively when you need to and stop harder. And Yeah, it's yep. cool. It's all about controlling your bike and feeling comfortable with your bike and not being scared of it. And that's one that'll get you over a lot of stuff. So yep. good, good what stuff. What do you think, Brian? Man. Amazing. What um, do you say? Two whole <laughs> words. I feel bad. No, it, it's been enjoyable to listen to. Okay, good, man. Yeah. That's if it was it. fishing, he'd be doing all the talking. I'd be doing all the listening. Right. Yeah. Right yeah. There you go. Don't forget to go over and check out Brian. Give it a plug, Brian. Your YouTube Nine channel. Nine Toes Fishing at YouTube. There you go. Go over to the Tube You. Check out the Tube, tube You. you. Mm, yeah. I think there's more education now on Tube You than there is at, like, you know, other there is. views. There absolutely is. Don't get stranded, bikeaholics. Get hooked up with our Ciro, or excuse me, get hooked up with our Cruise Tools RTH3 Roll Up Travel Toolkit for Hardy Davidson and American Made B Twin Motorcycles. That will be going on our seven day trip. Of course, always got those. Everybody in the lab crew's got those in their saddlebags. Why get stranded and have your bike towed over some small repair? That would be stupid. This quality made toolkit has everything you need for roadside emergency repairs tested and used right here by the law abiding biker crew we used it when we went down to reno on oscar's yes, bike we, we had to adjust his clutch that's yeah. on the documentary film yep it has our stamp of approval for that very reason get it already that's the cruise tools rth3 kit we brought it right to the law abiding biker store for you we have it in stock ready to ship i tell you nothing but five star reviews big daddy kane and grant who run the store down there have them ready to go Mm -hmm. I can see him down there right now. Big Daddy Kane's got two of them, one in each hand. Dreaming. He's got and a box and him. tape. 
just waiting for oh, the yeah. order to come in so he can drop it in a box, give it a little kiss. Totally probably th- motionless. Probably throw some stickers in there for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 mm-hmm. oh exciting. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know the faces behind the store there, guys. Those guys are working hard for you. Got any questions, hit them up in the store. There you go. Right on. Been a great, uh, great up ep- two episodes. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Two back episodes. to back. And I'm going to get home before midnight. The old lady likes that. I know. Yeah. We would have even been done before, but I think we talked for like 20 minutes before we even started the episode. You know what? That happened. And we watched the tube view video. Yeah, the tube view video. The yeah, I got exactly. my learnings. Those guys were cray cray. They are the old, the old execs. <laughs> oh, Harley. I think they were twins too. I, I, it, weird. Did you get that? Yeah. That like two that twin views were both Harley execs. Right. right. Yeah. Wow. Wearing the same shirt. But they were on camera at the same time. I couldn't figure that part out. It's, an, it's trickery. <laughs> oh, oh. I, I didn't know. It's total trickery. Yeah, I thought maybe they just wanted, like, this guy wanted it, the camera, and then this guy, and, like, we'll get two cameras. Mm. All right, guys, thanks for being here. We're going to take it out of here. Peace. Don't forget, this will be uploaded to the patron members in the back of your patron account the actual video edition you can see Oscar's lovely face and Brian's lovely beard yep it is it is a badass beard oh yeah he's going Wolverine style with the white on the side I just can't help that I have three kids (laughs) (laughs) and a crazy neighbor and a crazy neighbor (laughs) that's most of it oh yeah